Hey, how you doing everybody? My name is Cheerboy and welcome back to Kara Kara. Let's get right back into it. Once upon a time, a large disaster of some sort happened on this planet. There we go. What exactly it was, we no longer have any way of knowing. This is because the vast majority of our records were lost along with the disaster. All we know is that there was some sort of civilization and there was some sort of disaster. Robbed of both, both its stamina and identity as a species, the human race gathered what little remained of their broken civilization and scraped along, living day to day. The Age of Dusk. Those who research the past refer to the pa present in that manner. I see. Interesting. There are a few places scattered throughout this continent that we live on where small numbers of people gather. One of those gathering spots is the town known as Sagami Francisco. The population is approximately 2,000, since the people who settled here were from two separate countries, once known as Japan and America. The name consists of words from both languages. Apparently, this is one of the larger gathering spots in the world. Interesting. In an out-of-the-way corner of the town, Leon Laird, that is me, keeps a small diner running. Though the business does not boom, neither does it fall into hardship. Those are the kinds of ordinary days I spend together with my one and only employee. Yes, Lucia. Rather, I should say, spent. Those ordinary days came to an end one day when everything changed. <gasps> Wait, Arisa! <laughs> there she is. Oh, no. She be eating me. Stop it! Wake up! Wake up already! That morning, as soon as I wake up, something flies into my room from the side and robs me of my freedom. Yeah, yummy. This is yummy. What in the world are you talking about, Aisa? I'm not edible! Turns out, it's Aisa who robbed me of my freedom. Not only did she dash to my room from the side and clang on, she latches onto the back of my neck with her teeth and begins to chew while mumbling to herself. Mm, really hard to chew. How? Mm. Oh, damn it! Are you seriously trying to buy through me? Presumably enjoying some sort of bony meat in her dreams, Aisa continues to greedily chew on my neck. I eat these too. Not dumplings ears! Those are my ears! Desert time. That tickles! In a sudden turn of events, my neck is assaulted by a furious barrage of licking right at that moment. I feel an ominous gaze from the back of the room. Uh, oh, Lucia, this isn't what it looks like at all. Please don't get mad. I can explain. I'm not mad, and I don't care. You don't need to explain. Uh, you're already mad! You clearly care! Bye, then. Bye, what? Where are you going? Hey, come on! <laughs> Are you so you too, dammit? Everybody just calm down and listen to me! Yummy. She'll still be asleep. And so that happened. And then we're driving again. Hm. Lucia, please hear me out. I already did. That was an accident. Asa suddenly latched on to me. I didn't actually do anything. You heard me then. In that case, hearing and understanding are two different things. Ah. Ah, damn it, even the radio's acting up. Hey, Leon. Hmm? Why did you decide to let that girl live with us? Does it, you know, involve that thing with me? Hmm. As expected, it is bothering her. And now we go to the past. After Mom and Dad passed away, we had to organize their funeral. That was when it happened, after everything was settled and we finally got home. Everyone has left already. I see. Colin said she'll stay at the church to handle things from here. She said not to worry and that you should get some rest. I see. Thanks, Lucia. You probably have to start looking for your next job now. You should get some rest, too. Mm -hmm. Hey, Leon. Mm -hmm. Um, what are you going to do about the store? Keeping it running will probably be difficult. I can sort of copy my mom for the cooking, but someone has to serve the customers. I don't have that someone. I don't want to close the store, but at this rate. So, if you have that someone, you'll keep the store running? Huh? I will. As if stealing her nerves, she took a deep breath. 
I'll keep working with you. Yeah. Suddenly, Lucia graced me with the best smile she could muster, along with the most encouraging words I could hear. Lucia. Yeah, nice. Sweet. It's all thanks to Lucia that this store has managed to stay in business. In return, I had no choice but to grow up and become an adult. We became family on that day, and ever since then, there has been no room for romance in our relationship. <laughs> Jeez. That is why, despite living together under the same roof, roof, some awkward sense of embarrassment keeps us sleeping in separate bed. beds. Though we care greatly for each other, the knot in our hearts refuses to be undone. The opportunity lost, year after unchanging year, pass, passes, up, passes us by. So, Leona? No, it's got nothing to do with that. I rolled down the car windows a little, allowing the air, outside air to seep in. I just thought it'd be really sad if we left Aisa on her own, that's all. I see. Or is it Aisa? I don't know. Oh, Aisa. Aisa. Huh? Really? So you got a new staff member, huh? Yes, she came in after seeing the Hapwana poster. Cullen, who we ran into on the way back from delivery, surprises us with how genuinely happy she is to hear about our new employee. The Cullen I knew would have been poking all sorts of fun at us by now. What are you waiting for, then? What do you mean? Bigamy isn't illegal here, after all. I take back everything. This is absolutely the Cullen I knew. That's not how it is. Also, please don't say that in front of Lucia. I just managed to sort out the last misunderstanding. Oh, are you already up to your shenanigans? What's the story? Did you peek while they were changing? Open the door and then while they were taking a bath? Never mind that. Aren't you busy right now? With the whole others thing you mentioned last time? Oh, I'm busy, alright. The radio tower decided to break down, too. When it rains, it really does pour. The radio tower broke down? Oh, so that's why we couldn't listen to the radio. Thanks to that, it's been an endless stream of complaints since the morning. Oh, what do you know? It's time to go. I'll pop in to check out our new wife. Your new wife once everything's under control. Can you please stop that? Before I can finish, Colin jumps onto her motorcycle and speeds off. Huh? Is Colin here? Whoa, Lucia! When did you get back? Just now. What were you two talking about? Uh, the uh, radio town breaking down, and the whole others thing. Really? Well, I'm not lying. I'm just leaving out part of the truth. Alright, yeah, moving on. We get back to the store just past noon. We begin Aisa's job training now, while there are no customers in the store. Yeah, start training. Oh my, what a cute uniform! Aisa spins around while wearing the uniform Lucia prepared for her. Mm -hmm. yeah, it suits you perfectly. Yeah, fit you like a glove. Like a glove. It actually does fit her better than I expected. Of course, part of that is because Lucia made some fine adjustments to match Aisa's hair color. Oh, nice. Well then, ready, to, ready Aisa? Absolutely. There are three main parts to cleaning the store. There's wiping the windows, dusting the shelves, and small articles. And wiping the floor. Understood. Use this cleaner for the windows, okay? Go heavy on it or it won't work. I see, I see. This cleaner is for the floor. Unlike the other one, this one gets sticky if you put too much on. So just use a little and cut it with some water. Mm, mm, mm. Be gentle when you're using the dusting brush. If you stroke too hard with it, you'll end up knocking the small articles and books to the floor. Remember, gentle. Understood. That's it. I guess we'll have, have you give it a try then. Yes, I'll give it a try. Alright, yeah. To get things started, we send Aisa off on a test to clean the store. In the meantime, I am preparing things for tomorrow and Lucia is cleaning the kitchen. You think Aisa's okay? You, get, you can't exactly fail at cleaning. As long as you're not slacking off, she'll be all right. <laughs> Just before Lucia finishes her sentence, a slightly dopey sounding scream of distress echoes through the store. Uh, that's the sound of someone who has screwed up. <laughs> the two of us quickly meet each other's gaze. Alright. So. Aisa, what? Whoa! Aisa, Aisa, you okay? Oh, dear. Oh, it's not CG, yeah. Yeah, yeah, waifu. Okay, a fairly disastrous scene lies, lies before us. The flower vases that sat on top of the display shelf now lie shattered in pools of water on the ground, possibly due to being bumped by the feather duster. Like Hinamatsu. Or Hinamatsuri? Yeah, that's the anime. The sort of the commotion, Aisa is sitting on the floor with the front of her clothes soaked and a sk sk sorry look on her face. Sorry about that. Well, I'm so sorry! 
Did you hurt yourself? Get up slowly and go wipe yourself off. Take your time now. Okay, I understand. Aisa gets up and glumly walks away to wipe herself off. Being no stranger to such circumstances, Lucia swiftly brings the broom and dustpan. Every once in a while, there'll be a drunk customer who blunder their way into trouble, so she's fairly used to these kinds of cleaning jobs. However, I certainly did not expect the store to require your skills in the middle of the day. Oh, wow, this is impressive. As she gathers the ceramic fragments, Lucia takes a look around the store. Yeah, it sure is. A lot of floor cleaner on the windows, and a little bit of window cleaner on the floor. And the mess that results from an over-aggressive feather duster moving everything around. Everything's so completely wrong that it's sort of amazing. She managed to get everything perfectly wrong down to the last detail, so at least she was giving it all she's got, I guess. I guess she is the kind of person who has trouble sorting out a, sorting out instructions in her head. Maybe making a ha maybe make a habit of taking notes. I'm actually not quite sure how we should end should help her with this. I'm back. I'm so terribly sorry. I didn't even know how to begin apologizing. Welcome back. The most important thing is that you're fine. Certainly not. Was that face not something very precious? Oh, I don't know what I should do if I if it was. <laughs> That was a cheap one we bought at the flea market. Don't worry about it. Oh, but I still broke it! Oh. Aisa's apologetic expression suddenly changes. Cooking! I believe I can do some help with cooking! I can help you with cooking! Cook cooking, you say? I cannot even begin to describe how much of a bad feeling I'm getting. Judging by how the cleaning went, this cannot end well. Um, I won't cause any trouble, so may I borrow the kitchen for just a little bit? Sure. Thank you very much! And this is where we go wrong. Aisa dashes off to the kitchen. Lucy and I watch her go, then we turn to face each other. What do you think? I wouldn't want to say to her face, but... Yeah. Oh boy, what's gonna happen? Um... Huh. Um... Or, uh... Well, this is... How does it taste? <clears throat> Mysterious. More specifically, an erotic. <laughs> exotic taste, I guess. <laughs> Sorry about that. So in other words, it doesn't match your taste, as in, it's not very good. I'm terribly sorry. It's not. <laughs> A wail of anguish escapes from Aisa. I feel sorry for her, but as the owner and chef of this diner, I have to tell her the truth. I don't think part of it is a cultural gap in culinary habits, but I cannot say I like the taste. I can't cook, and I can't clean. What in the world would I be good for then? Aisa seems di deeply disheartened. Don't worry. Lucia walks over to Aisa and gently consoles her. No one is born good at everything. You just have to take time to take the time to learn. Really? Aisa looks up as if she found a thin glimmer of hope. Totally. I mean, back when Lucia... <clears throat> as soon as I begin to tell my story, Lucia glares at me. <clears throat> Never mind. Anyway, let's start by memorizing how to clean the windows and floor properly. <laughs> Did I mess that up too? Unfortunately, there wasn't much that you didn't mess up. <laughs> at any rate, let's give it a try. <laughs> This is good. This is going good. You use this much cleaner when you're wiping the windows. I see. That's quite a lot. Dirt and grime will always get onto the windows, so you have to really wipe it down with the cleaner. Oh, I see. As for the actual cleaning, you first you first wipe with the cleaner, then you wipe it with water, and finally you dry the cloth and wipe it wipe it again. With a comfortable familiar familiarity to her movements, Lucy goes from window to window cleaning them. Aisa falls behind, her tail wagging like a puppy's. Looks like I'm not really needed here. Leaving the two to their business, I retreat into the kitchen. Let's cook! <clears throat> what, you wanna learn how to cook too? Yes! That was quick. Unlike a little while ago, curiosity is now bubbling from Aisa's eyes. Hmm, it's good that you're curious, but this isn't something you can just pick up like that. Uh, of course. May I watch you cook though? Just once is enough. Watch me cook? Yes! What madness is this? Then again, it is true that a quick way to remember a process is to see it once in action. 
Plus, although her previous attempt didn't taste good, it didn't seem like she was putting ingredients in at random. If she gets the hang of it, then she may actually be able to cook some stuff that, su that suits a more local audience. Alright, I'm gonna go through the whole process so you can watch me from over there. Understood. Alright, yeah, learn how to cook. <clears throat> I prepare a few dishes that I am familiar with, going through the full process for Aisa to see. Mind you, I'm not holding her hand and explaining every step. I'm just cooking as usual, working through practice motions in silence. Just like when she was with Lucia, Aisa watched me with intense interest. I cannot tell how much good this is doing her, though. The one thing I can tell is that she takes things very seriously. That much is obvious, just from watching her. Yeah, nice. Really? You can speak so well, but you can't read or write yet? Yes, listening and speaking were easy, but I never had a chance to learn how to read or write. Huh, I guess you're a hands-on kind of learner. Um, may I ask you something, Lucia? <clears throat> what is it? Are there times when you're sad or feel down? Well, yeah, pretty often, actually. Wow, you feel like that sometimes, too? I'm not as strong-willed as you think. I get sad and have bad moods like everyone else. Then, then, what do you do in those cases? Hmm, I usually go watch the moon. The moon? Yeah, don't you feel more relaxed when you look at it? It's so quiet and its color is so gentle. There is spe there's a special spot I always go to. It's a place where I can take my time watching the moon. I see. Yeah, nice. The moon. Very nice. Beautiful. Okay. Hey, there it is. <laughs> Alright. Walking. 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 Okay. Hmm? Oh. Did I used to go to sleep already? Yeah, she could barely keep her eyes open. I stuffed her into the room. With the way she just kept talking, I guess she still starved for conversation. I see. Smiling wryly, I lower myself on the sofa. It was a tough day for you too, wasn't it? Nah, not as bad as you had it. I'm fine. It's the same stuff I always do after all. <clears throat> Playing lightly with her hair, Lucia speaks with just the slightest hint of embarrassment. You'll keep taking care of her then? Yeah. She's got a way of making you feel like you have to. <laughs> Lucia softly laughs. She's always following me no matter what I do. She's just like a little puppy. Turns out we have the same impression of her. For now, it doesn't look it does not seem like Lucia dislikes Isa in any way. I guess there aren't many people who hate puppies. It's on me, right? As her senior, I'm gonna have to show her the ropes. Yeah, keep it up. We've got a full day tomorrow. But keep her out of the kitchen, is what I almost say. But I cut myself off before it leaves my lips. That is a joke we can all live without. After all, the memory is probably embarrassing enough for her, for her as it is. As is. She's probably one of the few cooks who has never simmered meat and then dumped out the whole pot of broth afterwards. Right, let's turn in. Then, we got a long day ahead of us tomorrow. Lucia stands up. Good night, then. Okay, good night. Her steps light. Lucia walks off to her bedroom. It's good that we have a new pair of hands now, but said pair of hands is not quite pulling its weight yet. However, it looks like Lucy is happy with it, and, th and I think that's good enough for now. Nice. Of course. What I think has a remarkable tendency to be proven wrong in unexpected and bewildering ways. Nice. Alright. Well, yeah, that's all the time I have for this one, everybody. But thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like. And if there's any other games you'd like me to play, please comment down below as well. And if you like this and would like to see more, please hit that subscribe button and that notification bell, as that would be epically appreciated of you. And as always, my name is Sherboy, and I will see you in the next video. Bye! See ya!